congregation on Sundays reading from Matthew chapter 10, where Jesus says, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Check.
to some people, and then hands out bad cards to others, just to see if we, God's children, can pass a test. I've always struggled with that. A God who hands out cancer to this one, a God who hands out a car wreck to another, a God who hands out an accident here, or maybe a shattered marriage there, just so God can test us. I have trouble with that. You remember the story of Abraham and Sarah. They had been promised in their early years of their old age that they would be parents of a great nation. And Sarah, of course, she laughed at this news from God. But then she gave birth. And both she and Abraham, they took God's promise seriously. But now Abraham understood God to want him to kill that one son as a sacrifice. And Abraham was going to do it. Faithfully believing that God's promise would be fulfilled, he certainly didn't know how, he couldn't even imagine how this could be done. But he was ready to do it. He was ready to sacrifice his son. We don't have any record of Abraham arguing with God in this account. I mean, Abraham in other accounts was known to argue with God, to take on God, saying a word about the promise that God had made, or, or maybe to speak to God about his doubts. But here in this text, Abraham says nothing. He just goes ahead and begins this task. But in this experience, you see, Abraham's faith was proven. Abraham's faith was proven. Abraham's faith was demonstrated with such great strength. So I may not believe that God tests us in our usual understanding, but I believe that God proves us I really believe that God proves us, that God leads us through the ugliness of this world, that God leads us through bitter heartaches, that, that God leads us through our sorrows, that God leads us through our tears, that God leads us through our losses, God leads us through our failures and our bitter heartaches that we could never, ever get through on our but God leads us through these. And God proves our faith to us. Doesn't that sound a little better than God testing our faith? God proves our faith. God proves our faith to us. God proves our faith to those who are watching us that our faith is real and that our faith is steady and that our faith is nurturing. I believe this to the core of my being. And let me share one more thing with you. Because you read the story and you find out that the blood of Isaac was not shed, but there's something else that I don't believe. And you've heard the old saying about blood being thicker than water. Have you heard that? That blood is thicker than water. People who are related have stronger connections to each other. That people who are related by blood have stronger obligations to one another, to people outside. The family, that's what that means, isn't it? That blood is thicker than, than water. Listen to what Jesus says. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. These are some tough words, but they fit with what 
Jesus said in another context when he asked, Who is my mother? And who is my brother? And pointing to the disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my father is my mother and is my brother and my sister. Do you think Jesus believed that blood is thicker than water? I'm not sure about that. I don't know about the thickness of blood, but I do know that water is holier than blood. Water is always holier than blood. For it is in the giving of water that Christ identifies relationships of significance when he says in the gospel text for this day, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, they certainly will not lose the reward. So who are you giving water to these days? Who are you nurturing these days? Who are you helping these days? Who is bringing relief to you? Who is bringing refreshment to you and to your soul? Jesus says, these are your brothers and your sisters. They are your friends. They could be family. It's not taking anything away from your blood relatives, but it's much more than that Jesus is saying. These ones that are helping you, that are giving you a cup of water, they are your brothers and your sisters and your mothers and your children. They are your friends. They are the people to whom you are tied, not only by the water that you give and take, but they are tied to you by the water of baptism that ties us to each other, and that ties us to God. You see, it's in the water that binds us, not so much the blood. And it's such a simple thing, giving a cup of cold water, isn't it? Such a simple thing to do, a little act of no drama. Perhaps Abraham thought that he had to pass this dramatic test Maybe he thought he had to jump over this big hurdle, that he had to offer this quest for glory, but Christ simply says, give some water to those who are thirsty. Give a cup of cold water to those who are struggling. Help people who are in need. Give a cup of cold water to them, and you certainly won't lose the reward. I was hoping to have two hands when I did this. <laughs> but give a cup of cold water to someone. It's such a simple thing. It's not a great drama. Even just a cup of cold water. And offer it to somebody. Offer that cup of cold water to somebody to quench their thirst to relieve their pain, to show them that they are not alone, that you share with them in their struggle. Jesus says, offer a cup of cold water in the name of the disciple, in the name of the disciple, and you certainly will not lose the reward. It's such a simple thing, but Jesus says, Offer a cup of cold water. It's what servants do, you know. It's what servants of Christ do. Jesus says, take up my cross and follow me. Because that's what servants of Christ do. They take up their cross and they follow their Savior. And as they take up their cross, they realize that that cross is light. Because others are helping them bear that cross. Take up your cross and follow me. That's what servants of Christ do. 
sharing a cup of cold water. Maybe Abraham didn't notice that water that was overflowing or that was flowing in and for his family. But we in this church, we notice that water. That water that's constant. I don't hear water flowing. My God, I hear water flowing. That's what Jesus calls us to. Keep that water flowing. That baptismal water. Keep it flowing one to the other, Jesus says. That's your calling. That water flows and it will continue to flow. The waters of baptism that tie us all together. The cup of water as we share our needs with one another. As we look to one another to help us when the struggle is deep. That water is always flowing, isn't it? Because that's what a servant's heart always knows. This water that flows. Do we need more water? I'm getting a little thirsty up here, I'll tell you. Keep that water flowing. Take a big 